And we just need to understand. Like we went down, we have a, a good friend. Well, I had a good friend that was a minister. He was actually, we actually credentialed him through this church. We helped him start a church down in South Missouri. And uh, him and his wife were doing that. And he got so bad health. He's just a year, he was just a little over a year older than I was. And, but he passed away in September. He had, he had a uh, muscular dystrophy. And, uh, and he passed away from a heart attack. And his wife, we went down to saw her. We spent three days with her down there. We took her, and we decided we were going to take her to Silver Dark to see the lights. And we knew it was going to cost us like 200 bucks total for tickets for me, Kathy, and her with tax. So we went down there expecting to buy tickets. And so we got to we got down there to the to the ticket booth. We were getting ready to go in the ticket booth. And somebody has said, well, I have one free ticket. And so I said, well, Joanne, you can take that ticket. And you have to go through with the person, you know. So so she went through, and then Kathy and I went on up to the ticket counter. Yes. We're getting ready to buy our tickets, and another guy said, I've got two free tickets. Glory to God. <laughs> so all three of us got in free instead of having to pay two hundred dollars, we got in free. Yes. Hallelujah. That's just the favor of God. Yeah, great. Hallelujah. That's just the favor of God. Thank you, Lord. It's just the favor of God. Amen. But we can walk. In the favor and blessings of God, but we've got to obey God. We've got to do what God says to do. Hallelujah. Just follow God's directions. Learn to be led by the Spirit of God. Amen. I can't over. I can't. Over, the most important thing that I learned. I learned a lot from Kenneth Hagin and his teachings. But the, one of the most important things I ever learned was how to be led by the Spirit of God. And the importance of being praying in the Holy Ghost and being sensitive to the voice of the Spirit of God. And when you learn to be led by the Spirit of God, then God can use you for mighty things. Yes. Even though, I mean, in our in ourself, we can't do much. I mean, Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. That's, That's right. what he said. Yes. Yeah, it was just Jesus that said that. Mm -hmm. But I believe what Jesus said. Right. Amen. And he said, those who follow me keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. He said, if you obey me, you'll keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. He said, if you, if you stay in my word... Then are my disciples indeed. If you continue in my word, then are my disciples indeed. So we are as children of God. We still have to stay in God's word. We still have to obey God. And then we're his disciples. Yes. But in Romans chapter 8, it says, Those that are led by the Spirit of God, those are the sons of God. Now, Jesus in the earth, he, he, he spent massive amounts of time in prayer. So he was sensitive to his Father's voice. If we'll spend time with God, We'll be able to understand, hear his voice. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice and another they will not follow. So we can hear from God. Jesus sent us the Holy Ghost to lead us, to guide us, to direct us. And he'll always lead us to good places. God wants to lead us. He wants to direct our paths. The Bible says the paths of a good man, the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. Right. So, so we need to learn just simply to hear from God and be sensitive to God's voice. Yes. Every morning I usually wake up about 5 in the morning and the first thing I do when I wake up is I start saying God I love you. And I just try to make it a practice to do that. Mm -hmm. I say God I love you and I'll lay there and I'll pray for a little bit. And then I get up and spend time in the word. We spend some hours in the word every morning. And uh, we do that pretty much every morning. And uh, so if you call me at 6 in the morning, I'm probably in the Word. Okay, but 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 then I probably won't be out until maybe 8. So, yeah, the, the Word. Sometimes sometimes we go so long that we don't even have, it gets, it turns 9 o'clock and, and we haven't ate breakfast. And so, yeah, so i got to go eat breakfast. <laughs> but anyhow, it's, it's good to be in God's Word. We need to, the Bible says we should continually have the Word before our eyes. So we should continually see what God says so that we can... Get his word big in our hearts. Now, seven years ago in October, I had a massive stroke. And during that stroke, I lost my ability to speak. And, and then I had severe aphasia, which is I couldn't say what I was thinking. And I, I, I just couldn't say what I was thinking. And so when I got to the hospital, God spoke to Kathy and told her that, that people would be amazed at how I could speak the word, how I could preach. And so when I get up to preach, though, the word that I'd hidden in my heart, it would just come out of my mouth. But I couldn't, like, 
Like if you wanted me to, to counsel with you, I couldn't do that because I couldn't say what I'm thinking, you know. But the word that I hid in my heart, I could just say that. I could say what? Like I could say, speak the word with me. Will you speak the word? Because the words I've hid in my heart. And, but I couldn't sit down and talk to you. And so people want counsel me. I, I couldn't do it because I can't, couldn't sit. I mean, I couldn't talk to my wife at the house. And so I could say yes, but I couldn't. I mean, she, she called me the night I had the stroke and, at midnight. And she said, are you doing okay? But only, I had had the stroke. I, the only thing I could say was yes. And when she came home the next day, she found out she came back there to the back room and, and I, she hadn't talked to me all day. And she said, so are you doing okay? I said, yes. And then she got worried about something she found and, from the stroke. And then she came back and she said, and I couldn't talk to her. And she said, can you write it down? And I shook my head. I could write it down. And I sat there and I wrote, I wrote, I wrote and wrote. I don't even remember this. But she looked at it. She, I, I, she said, I was writing. Yes, I can write it down. Yes, I can write it down. Yes, I can write it down. Over and over through a whole page. And then she freaked out. Because she thought, something is massively wrong. Yeah. So, so anyhow, somehow she got, we got to the car, and uh, and Tom Tom she Tom this was on Wednesday I think Tom was down here at the church he was going to preach that night. And we got down here and Tom went with Kathy and took me to to a hospital. Yeah. Up in Kansas City. When you said, "Yeah, this is." The yeah, one. I wasn't the right one, but that's when I was, I was crazy out of my mind again. So anyhow. It turned out to be Truman Medical Center. I wanted to go to St. Luke's, you know. Yeah. That's where the stroke center is. But, but anyhow, they really can't do anything for you. So they just can run up a bunch of bills and send you home. And yeah. So, uh, so anyhow, they sent me home. And but when I, when I was I was up there a couple two or three days, I was up there. And uh, when they went to put me in the car, they wheeled me down to put me in the car. And I just fell out of the out of the. Uh, wheelchair into the car head first and I couldn't get up. I was just laying. I was half in and half out of the car and I laid there for probably 10 or 15 minutes. It took minutes. a couple of us, me and the, another nurse and all of everybody trying to get in that right. space and yeah. trying to get you to sit. Anyhow, that was not good. <laughs> it wasn't good. But anyhow, they wanted to put me back in the hospital. I said, I'm, I'm not going back in the hospital. I mean, I, I said, I refused. You know? So anyhow, we went home and, and the thing is, if we will just learn to hear from God, if we'll just become sensitive to the voice of God. Now, I've learned that God sounds a lot like His Word. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. That's right. Amen. If you, if you think it's God, if you don't th it's think it sounds like His Word, it's probably not God. But if it sounds like His Word, that's probably God because God never, ever has changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He'll always be the same. That's right. And if it doesn't line up with His Word, then it's not God. That's right. So you better find out what, the, you, if you don't know what the Word says, it's going to be hard to know because the devil can talk to you too. That's right. The devil can talk to you. I mean, I, I heard one guy in ministry said that he heard something say, you shall surely die. But it wasn't God. And you, it wasn't God. That, it was, he turned out it was the devil mm -hmm. trying to get him to accept that. Yeah. God wants blessing and favor goodness for us. God never ever has changed. In James it says it says every good and perfect gift cometh down from God from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness neither shadow of turning. So God is mighty. God is good. God wants to lead us, to guide us, to direct us. And the way he led God and directed Jesus was he, he spoke to him and led him and guided him and directed him. One time Jesus wanted to appoint 